Hey guys, this is Julie. Um, I'm a third year clinical student and I just wanted to give you some term three advice. So before I get into my actual few slides here, term three is a really, I won't say it's super easy, but it's a good term to do very well, or it's a good term to do well in. It's a good term to, you know, enjoy some free time, have a little fun, but it is tough as hell to, to get the A plus or the A, so. Just gonna close my camera quick because sometimes it cuts off part of the slide. So one second. Okay, so just my general advice for term three. So the kind of the same thing if you watch my term two video, you know, I watch, I go to the lecture, I pay attention and I take notes during lecture. So outside of that, you know, I'm using physio, kind of the same thing I did in term one and term two. So I supplement my post lecture so I'll do a post lecture, you know, pretty short, keep it to two hours tops. And then usually I would watch the quick uh, physio video that correlated with that lecture. So aside from that, you know, I did my pre-read 15, 30 minutes tops, went to lecture, took some notes, did my post read that night at tops two hours. Um, and then I do all of my quick notes. So making my own personal notes from lectures on the weekends, because I have a better um, idea of how to organize my notes when I when I see the whole week because SGU likes to organize say lectures one and three together and two and four so at the end of the week I can put one three and five together I can put two four and six together all in my notes like that so it flows a lot better so one other thing that I really suggest is get a second get a question bank SGU does provide a lot of questions but especially for the ethics and the biostats. I thought it was super helpful um, to go through Rx and get all those done. It helped me a lot, which is seeing these tough, confusing ethics questions multiple ways. And then the biostats, a lot of that is just repetition. You know, the more times I do a question on attributable risk, it just becomes muscle memory because all it is is, is math. Um, one thing I do suggest is I did not know this, uh, SGU does give you USMLE RX in term five. So for me, I had two of the same question banks at the end, which was a waste of money in my opinion, because I'm not going to do the same question bank twice. So what I suggest is if you don't have a question bank already, you know, get Kaplan, get AMBOSS, um, don't get RX because you're going to get that in term five and you're going to have questions assigned for that. And it's just going to be a waste if you buy it already and then you get it again, you know, from the school, which technically you did pay again for it. So it's just kind of a waste. Just some other general tips. Um, I hammer this home all the time to students who ask me, you know, how did you do so well? How did you do so well in each term? Make your own notes and you want to make your notes so that you are explaining things to yourself. I'm not making notes you know, for my buddy to read, for me to teach somebody else, I'm making notes for me to conceptualize those things for myself, for nobody else. You know, it doesn't make sense if my best friend, you know, understands my notes better than I do. I need to understand those for me. So write them, you know, for you, write them for yourself, write them in a way that it's going to make those internal connections across multiple disciplines for you to come back and look at those later. Um, other tips. I am a big practice question person. I think a large majority of why I did so well in every term was just the amount of practice questions I did. So by the end of term four, I had done roughly 70% of USMLE RX. So on average, I had done way, way more questions than the majority of students at, at that point, I will say. Um, and I think having practice questions ask you things in different ways is is exactly how SGU likes to ask things, you know, because if they're going to ask me a topic, say on, you know, some microbe, you can only ask about that topic, say in five ways. If I've answered all five of those ways, I mean, if I get on the test, there's not really any way they can trick me because I've been tricked five times before, you know, like there's no other way that you're going to miss that because you've done so many practice questions on it. Um, and then for me, ethics is confusing, you know, so you want to make notes that help you. You want to make notes that help you remember that principle, maybe quick tips. And then the other thing is just, like I said, practice questions. Um, Physio now has made a public health section. When I was using it, they did not have these at the time, but I can 
easily say I would have watched them, you know, if they were available. So if you have Physio, if you have a membership, definitely go and watch all the biostats and watch the public health section. Um, just coming back to the biostats videos and why I really like those. They work through practice problems with you. You know, so it's not just, you know, I'm not hating on boards and beyond, but it's really just a guy reading the slides to you. So it's very much like lecture to me and a little bit boring. But in physio, I mean, they are talking about practice questions. They're drawing things out. They're doing the math with me. You know, they're really showing me the ways to make connections of what attributable risk means, what relative risk reduction means. You know, that process of watching it fold out, unfold in front of me was super helpful in keeping things straight in my mind. So exam one. Biostats, epidemiology, and immuno. And if those three, those three things sound just completely weird, it is. It's a very strange test. All of term three, I think, was very strangely organized. You know, in my mind, it should have been biostats, ethics, epidemiology, and then immuno and micro at the end. But I'm not administration, so, you know, what, what do I know? But it is quite a weird array of questions when you're taking things. So again, things I would do the same, make my own notes. I always redo IMCQs twice. I don't always get to all of the practice questions twice, but I always do IMCQs twice because if you'll notice, you know, the more times you take SGU tests, they ask the exact same principles that they ask at IMCQ. So it's very beneficial to do those twice. And when I'm redoing IMCQs, like I said in my term two video, you know, I'm talking out why is A wrong? Why is B wrong? Why is C right? Why is D wrong? You know, I'm writing those out. I'm figuring out all those other options because now I've just answered, you know, four other questions instead of just one. So make, make the questions as active as possible. Things that would do the same, I would do the biostats questions again. Again, like I said, get a secondary question bank and, and do those questions. Uh, physio biosets videos were absolutely amazing for me. I think I learned those topics better than everybody, to be honest with you. Um, and then as the SNL practice test. So SNL is a DES group. Um, the guy's name who actually runs it, his name is Larry. He makes amazing practice tests. I don't know, you know, how he made all those questions for all of us every term, but I mean, he is absolutely amazing and, and thank him so much for making all these tests for us because I love them. So his tests I did just about for every exam. Sometimes I did them twice if I didn't give above a 90% on them. So definitely go to his DES group, subscribe and download all of his practice tests and do them. So I, if I did them twice, if I did it, I would usually do it the week before. So say like that Monday or that the Sunday before the exam, if that makes sense, two Sundays before, I guess. So if I did not get above a 90, the following weekend, so the weekend right before the exam, I would do the test again and I made sure I got above a 90. So if you get above a 90 first time, fine, you're done. You don't have to do it again. If you don't, I did it again. So I erased every answer. I waited a week and I redid it. Um, things I would do differently here. So I wish I would have done a little more questions on epidemiology. You know, I thought biostats would be the trickiest, but once you get the math down, you know, really that's that's not bad at all. Um, I wish I would have focused a little more energy on immunology and epidemiology. Epidemiology is very confusing, especially all the case studies, how they can ask them if it's, you know, a retrograde, uh, retrospective, or if it's, you know, looking into the future of patients and all this stuff, like that stuff gets really confusing. So I wish I would have done a little more questions on that. The lady who teaches immunology, she is absolutely amazing. I will say that she was probably, you know, next to Trotz in bio, biochem. Um, she was up there in my favorite teachers of SGU because she loves what she does and she teaches it well. And I wish I would have done her a little more service by doing some more practice questions. Exam two, so this is micro, immuno and ethics. Ethics, I think for me is probably the toughest, toughest subjects, just because, you know, if it's not one of those basic questions, like, can you give blood products to, to a child, you know, in an emergency situation? Yes, you don't need parents permission for that. 
You know, it's not one of those quick snap of the fingers like you know it. Some of these are super, super tricky. And SU likes to add, like likes to ask about some of the, the laws and I did not um, look over those. So maybe that's a quick tip right there. If, if I would have done this again, I would have read the summarized ethics companion. So SGU has its own ethics companion for term three. And I did not read it. I didn't read the summarized version either. Um, and I wish I would have done one or the other, probably the summarized version just to save a little bit of time, but it goes through all the laws, it goes through all the ethics, you know, why these things are ethically correct. And maybe that's where my gap was. I didn't really understand a lot of why things were ethically correct in my mind. Um, but again, you know, whatever. Things I would do the same, I would make my own notes, redo the MCQs, the practice test again. Um, I did do all of the micro questions for RX. I think a lot of people spent a ton, a ton of time watching Sketchy and I didn't do that. Uh, I didn't watch Sketchy at all, to be honest, in term three. So for me, a lot of that stuff, you know, micro farm physiology comes more naturally. So I didn't think I needed to spend a lot of time watching videos. Um, if you're a picture person, if you need that kind of mnemonic help, Physio has a micro section now. So if worst case, I probably would have done that. Um, otherwise, I mean, you can use Sketchy. The only thing is, is the time commitment to watching those. So I didn't think it was more beneficial than me just doing practice questions on all the micro. So I did not do it. Uh, things I would do differently, like I said, I would have read that ethics companion for sure, the summarized version. I also wish I would have done more ethics questions. You know, when I'm in the term and I'm thinking, you know, now, like, you know, that it's over, in the term, I think, oh, ethics is just going to be this quick, easy, like, I'm ethically sound, you know, I'm going to know all these questions. But after you take the test, it's like, man, like two of those seem, two of those seem like correct answers. So there's a lot of confusion. Um, and I think just doing more questions and getting things wrong more times, I would have learned you know, what the right answer should have been. And then I wish I would have done the physio immunology videos. Again, I thought the lady who taught immunology did so well that I didn't put a lot of time into that. And I mean, I mean, my grades are fine, obviously, but, you know, I wanted to get an A in this term just to say, you know, I did it because I had heard this in my term too. You know, it's, it's very easy to, to get a B, B plus. It's extremely hard to get the A, A plus. So I really did want to get the A, the A plus, but you know, it is what it is. So if if you are one of those people, you know, the the overachievers out there like me who would, you know, is looking for that A plus, the A, I would spend a little more time on immunology, a little more time on ethics, um, because the biostats, even though I spent a lot of time on that, I think those are easier questions than the ethics and immunology. So this is just an example again of my quick notes. So this um, one on the left would have been for exam one, the one on the right would have been part of exam two. But you can see, I mean, I, I use a bunch of colors. I use, you know, highlighting, I square things off, I, you know, make little clouds. And this is just kind of my style of things. So make your notes however you want. You know, I like kind of answer definition, explanations, you know, things that kind of come out on the side that help clarify things for me. One big thing about doing this in OneNote versus a notebook like I did in term one is now I started realizing I could take snips from the lecture slides and pop those right into my notes. And that is a game changer because once I made my quick notes for the week, I never, never, never went back to a lecture slide. I never had to. And when I have these, you know, based on topics, you know, I'm organizing them by immunology all, all in one single group. I have my girl all in one single group. You know, when I'm studying for step, I can come back and quickly reference all these and look things up and study an entire, you know, term in about four hours. So it is super, super helpful to have these later on in the game. Um, and with that, I guess, you know, I'm gonna wish you guys a happy term. One big thing of advice is term three and term four is awfully long. I did this on the island and I did not go home for it at all. I didn't go home at all. So I was on the island for six months. I know this is different because you guys are at home now, but um, remember to take some time for your mental health. 
you know, you need to, to do something you enjoy every day, at least for a little bit, you know, whether it's an hour or two hours. But for me, I always played basketball. Um, I tried to watch basketball at night if I had some extra time, but, you know, see your friends, talk to your family, you know, just skip a day if you have to. But, you know, I, that was something I was absolutely terrible at is, is taking time for myself instead of just studying, studying, studying. And in the grand scheme of things, like I wrote in my term one advice, you know, if you get 94, great. But is that really that different than a 90? If your mental health goes to shit, it's, it's probably not. So remember that your mental health is just as important, you know, if not more important than your grades, because if you get out of SGU and you're just ready to crumble, I mean, that's not going to be good for step. So, you know, always keep your mental health um, up there too. So thanks guys. Hopefully you watched it and made it to the end. If not, oh well, I guess, but I am going to make a term four video eventually. So stay tuned for that. Thanks.